Hello, I'm Eric Folks, and today we're going to talk about how to get started with Smart Response. We are going to set up a teacher file as if you are brand new to Smart Response. We're going to set up a class. We're going to pull in students from Skyward. We're going to add a student who hypothetically joins the class at some point throughout the year, and we're going to start the class. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. We're going to click in the bottom right hand corner on the icon called Smart Response. It's possible that you will not see this icon right away and you may have to hit the little drop up arrow and go to Smart Response that way. Once you left click on that, you're going to go to Teacher Tools. And once you click on Teacher Tools, you're going to see something that looks like this, assuming you haven't set up anything in Smart Response. You'll see the only thing that's required is this classroom name. So I'm going to go ahead and name that test. This is what students are going to see when they sign in to the clickers. So I click Save. It asks me where do you want to save it. It's very important that we save it on the C drive somewhere. So I'm going to click on Computer and C drive. And I can go to a variety of different places. If I want to, I could just go to the Documents. I could also go into the Program Files or the Program Files x86, either one of these locations to see if I can find the Smart Response folder or Smart Technologies. I could also just save it to my Documents folder. Uh, everything here is in your C drive as well. The only place you cannot save it is to your H drive. So you wouldn't want to save it to the H drive. You can have complications that way. So just to keep things simple, we're going to save it to the Documents folder and we're going to call it folks demo teacher file and you can see it's a dot teacher file so if you ever need to find it you can always go from over here and, and look for dot teacher files and it will search for anything that meets that criteria so I'm going to click save and it creates that teacher file this is where we're going to have all of our classes our students the assessment data that we run through smart response all that good stuff will be in that that teacher file Okay, so now that we have created the teacher file, it's time for us to add a class. So I'm going to click Add a Class. I'm going to name my class. You can put in a period if you want. Adjust the passing threshold. I click Add. Okay, so now you see the class listed over here. So I'm going to left click on that class to select it. And once I've got a class selected, you see I've got three different options across the top. Home is one way I can start the class. I can also do it from the Smart Response within Smart Notebook. Students is where I'll see all the students listed. And assessments is any assessment history uh, that I've got associated with that class will be found in here. Assuming that is the assessment is run through Smart Response and not through Smart Response Edgeforia Connector, and that's a whole nother topic. Okay, so it's time to pull in some students. The easiest way to do this is going to be to go into Gradebook. So if you go to Gradebook and you click on My Gradebook, you click on one of your classes, we're going to go for this export up here. Okay. But the first thing we want to do is make sure that we've got all the ID numbers as well as their first and last names. You can make adjustments to that under display options. If you need to click on display options and make sure student ID is selected, it's very easy to do. Because all we need is their last name, first name, and ID. So I click export and it takes a second. And then it gives me a link to an export file. Now depending on your browser, when you click on that link, it's going to show up in various places. Since I'm using Google Chrome to demonstrate this, the easiest way for me to get to that Excel file is to say show all downloads, and there's my Excel document. If you're using Internet Explorer or Firefox, it's going to go wherever you normally download your files. Uh, I say yes when it tells me that I'm trying to open up a file in a different format than specified by the file extension. And then you can see we've got all sorts of information in here, most of which we don't need. So first thing I have to do is enable editing up at the top. And then I'm going to get rid of any extra information I don't need. So I just need their last name, first name, and ID. 
So I'm going to highlight all those columns. Okay, and notice I did that by left clicking on the column letter and dragging across. And then I'm going to right click on one of the columns that I've got selected and delete. And it'll delete the entire column. Then I'm going to do the same thing with these rows over here. So notice I'm leaving last name, first name, and ID. Those column headers are very important. So I'm going to right click on the row after I've got those selected and delete those rows. Then I'm going to left click on column A and delete that entire column by right clicking on the column header. And then the last two fields I need to delete are right here. And I can just highlight those fields individually and delete those. So now I've got last, first, and ID for my first period and that's exactly what I need. So now I'm going to say File, Save As. I'm going to save it someplace that's easy to find. We'll call this one Demo Class. And this is very important. You'll see it defaults to a file type XML Spreadsheet 2003. That's not where we want. We want to go with the very top option, Excel Workbook. I click Save. Then I can minimize that Excel and go back in to my teacher tools. Okay, and you can see how that icon appears down here. Now I'm going to click Add Students to My Class. It's going to, if I've got multiple classes created, it'll ask me which class I want to import those students into. So I'm going to just go with my demo class. I say Next. We saved it as a file type, Microsoft Excel. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and select that one and Next. And then it's going to ask to find it. So I've saved mine to the desktop, so it's very easy for me to find. We called it demo class. I open it. And now you'll see in teacher tools it's importing those students. Usually doesn't take very long. And now you can see all of the students. Okay, so let's go back to our game plan. We have set up a teacher file, we have set up a class, we've added students from a Skyward import. Last thing that we really need to do is learn how to add an extra student who joins the class throughout the year. You know, let's say Johnny joins the class mid-semester or something like that. Well, as long as I've got that class selected and I click the Students tab, all I have to do is double click at the very bottom. Notice how I scrolled up and down here? At the very bottom, there's an extra space that's always going to be there. I just double click on that and I put in that ID number for that individual student. Double click on the next space put in their first name or last name. I've got them reversed right here. And then I just click off of there. Oops. One more time. Looks like it may have already alphabetized them. So uh, it disappeared from the very bottom, but that's just because it automatically alphabetized them. So I've added my extra student in there. Uh, Another point uh, in the Students tab right here, when you have started a class uh, from the Home tab, you can start a class. You can also do that from the Smart Response drop-down. But once students are online, you can actually see their status right here. It'll actually light up to indicate that that student has been online. If you ever need to adjust their ID number because it was imported incorrectly or it's changed, you can also do that right here. Okay, so last thing we need to do is how to start the class. I showed you one way. It's from the home tab for any particular class you can just click start a class. Uh, another way to do that is from within the notebook file where you've actually got your assessment created you can from the drop down for response click start a class and you'll see any classes that you've got created. Notice it defaulted to anonymous mode but if I want to actually be able to track the student responses down to the student I would need to start a particular class. Once I click on that it'll take just a second it may tell me that the class has been started uh, and then normally it will tell me that the students can go ahead and sign in at that point. Uh, and uh, then we begin working with our actual assessments, which is the focus of the next video. I'm Eric Folks. Thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, you know where to find me. Thanks.